Our final award tonight is for the Tufts Alumni Lifetime Service Award for Sandra Simzak. Sandra, Sandra Zimzak, Jackson, 1959. Sandra, you have been an active alumna since your graduation in 1959 as a member and president of the Jackson College Association of Tufts Alumnae, later known as the ATA, as a member and chair of many committees of the Alumni Council, and as chair of the council from 1979 to 1980. You have been president of the Boston Tufts Club, and an active member of your class of 1959 reunion committee. You have been on the executive board of the Jumbo Club, volunteered as a writer and editor for Tufts University Advancement. You've been involved with the Osher Institute for Lifelong Learning, both as a teacher and as a student since its beginning, and have served as vice chair of its executive committee. You are always in the tent at homecoming, handing out food and information buttons, I remember that, uh, welcoming alumni back to campus and encouraging the students to talk with alumni. You're often the first to show up, helping the staff set up for the day and bringing laughter and fun during the high stress moments. And you always help throughout, through, the, through to the end, cleaning up and making sure that the staff is all set. You are a constant presence during alumni weekend when you welcome alumni back to campus ready to help with anything that needs to be done welcoming the older alumni to campus and providing a happy face for all alumni. You're very supportive of the Office of Alumni Relations. It's, it's st uh, if staff suggest a new program or idea, you're the one who will say, try it, see how it works. If it's successful, keep it. If it's not, don't do it. Tim Brooks says, trust me, the staff appreciates um, your truly collaborative and supportive attitude. In 2008 to 2009, you were part of a small committee that was responsible for working with the architect to select the amenities, colors, finishes, and furnishings for the renovated alumni hall, which now serves as a welcoming home for the Alumni Council when we convene our meetings on campus. In 2009 2010, you played a major role in planning the celebration of the sesquicentennial of the Tufts University Alumni Association. You co-authored the definitive history a Light from the Hill, which traces the origins of organized alumni efforts at Tufts from the mid-19th century to the 21st. You dreamed that the campus should have a marker to symbolize alumni support and love of their alma mater, and we now have the alumni patio on the hill between Barnum and Ballou, a gift from the university to the Alumni Association in recognition of our milestone 150th anniversary. You should feel proud to have been the visionary and advocate that made this happen. Page two. You, you have been a big part of the revival of Traditions Week by the current Tufts students, meeting with them to tell them about the many, tra many traditions that existed before and exploring which of them they could revive. Most recently, you founded and have been president of the Tufts Senior Connection, a group that reached out to older alumni with events that appeal to their interests and schedules. You have served the university in many important volunteer leadership roles and as teacher, mentor, advocate, and tireless worker. You contribute time, but also ideas. You have been recognized by the university many times with the Tufts Alumni Distinguished Service Award in 1973, with the Association of Tufts Alumni Outstanding Service Award in 2000, an award from the Tufts Institute for Lifelong Learning in 2003, and a volunteer recognition award. We are now proud to present you with our highest honor, the Tufts Alumni Lifetime Service Award, which recognizes your consistent and valuable contributions to the Tufts community. Please sit down. It's already past my bedtime. Receiving this Lifetime Service Award has a serious downside for me. First, I feel very old tonight. <laughs> and second, it's hard to put 50 years of, of service into the three minutes I was told tonight that I had, and I'm gonna talk for more than that because I'm the last one up here. <laughs> uh, 
since I received that phone call from Betty Hinckley, my first response was to refuse the award because I don't think I'm done yet. <laughs> I don't plan to die tomorrow, and I do plan to continue. <laughs> Good, because I plan to stay. I, as I said earlier, I, I've seen six presidents now, counting Tony, and I've been advising and being a pain in the neck to all five before him, <laughs> and you can count on more from me, Tony. <laughs> When I, I've had time now to think about what I was going to say tonight, and everybody that I want to thank, except for a few people at this table, are no longer with us, because after all, I started 50 years ago. Um, when we revamped the Alumni Awards program several years ago, this award in our mind was called the John Baronian Award. And if you knew John Baronian, you know why. Um, Baronian did it all. He was TUAA president, he was a co-founder of the Jumbo Club, he was an alumni trustee, which is a major deal, and Mr. Tufts to everybody who knew him. He loved this place, he led by example, and he knew absolutely everybody. And what I envy the most is he parks his car wherever he wanted and never got a ticket. Now, I want to know how that works, because I want that deal. Um, thank you, John, for everything, and there'll never be another you, never. Next, I want to thank the ladies of the Jackson College Association of Tufts Alumni. I became active with JCATA when my classmate and good friend Maureen Golden joined their executive board. She chaired the Holly Ball her first year, and I got to help. Um, the ball was the major fundraiser for scholarship and absolutely had to succeed. We were not allowed to fail. It was a festive party held in Alumni Hall with food and music and <coughs> fruit punch. We suggested spiking the punch, and at that meeting, the room went deadly silent. Anathema. Uh, they, they listened to us, and they finally permitted us to have the spike punch, as long as we had the unspiked punch available. Guess which bowl needed to be refilled constantly. <laughs> Within a couple of years, we were up to a full cash bar, but we made money for scholarship. I learned a lot from these women. First, they were indeed ladies. Those were the days of hats and white gloves and never an unkind word. We were allowed to disagree, that was quite, that was okay, but not to be disagreeable. And I wish some of the kids today would learn that. You don't have to carry a placard and say down with, all you have to say is up with something else. Um, Robert's Rules was our bylaw, it was the Bible. You, if you stepped out of line, somebody banged the gavel and you sat down quickly and gracefully. And third from them, if it was worth doing, it was worth doing well. They set goals and kept at them until success was achieved. It took them 27 years to raise the money to build Alumni Hall. And they did it. They sold potholders and brownies and cupcakes and had silver teas, and they finally got the money together. During that time, however, campus needs changed. The original plan was a freestanding building with rooms for the sororities to meet, a small theater because the theater was sharing space with what was the women's gymnasium at the time, not a good deal, and space for alumni events. Well, by the time they got the money together, um, we had Henry Clay Jackson Gymnasium for Women, and I'll tell you the story about that some other time, and Cohen Auditorium was about to be built. They needed something to bridge the gap between those two buildings. So the ladies got a new architect, went back and drew the plans, and we had Alumni Hall. Alumni Hall opened in 1955. So you see from these ladies, a good plan might need to be tweaked, but never abandoned. My history with JCATA was unusual. When Maureen Golden became president-elect, she asked me to join the board. Well, my work schedule, I worked at Jordan Marsh, and we all know what retail is like. I did not have a lot of flexibility, but she assured me directors did not have specific duties, so I could squeeze it in. So I said, okay, I mean, has anyone here ever tried to say no to Maureen Gold? It can't be done. Um, all went well until the woman who was to succeed Maureen as president was badly injured in a car crash and couldn't move up. To this day, I do not remember saying yes, <laughs> but somehow I became president. Um, thanks to my wonderful board, two members of which are at this table, and the support of all those ladies, JCATA survived my term, and so did I. Thank you to all my support team there. Maureen Golden, yep, she strikes again, convinced me to stand for election to the Tufts Alumni Council. I was thrilled when I lost the election. <laughs> I thought I was off the hook at last. However, there's this, this little provision in the bylaws that allows two people to be elected from the failed candidates. 
stuck again. I'm now nearing the end of my fourth 10 year term. I have stories to tell, but not in Nick's company. My guardian angel here was always alumni secretary, Fred Nicholas. Fred ran the entire alumni program with a secretary and an assistant and two lovely ladies in the basement who kept all the alumni records. Now, all of you people who are tied to your computers are fine, but these ladies never had an address wrong. They always had the telephone numbers changed. All you had to do was call and ask for the locator and they put you right through and they were back to you in 10 minutes with all the information you wanted. I can't even boot up a computer in 10 minutes. Fred was there. He could give advice and consent and, and help with the printing and he proofread everything that went out of the building. Nothing ungrammatical ever left under Fred's leadership. But he had no staff. So all of us volunteers had to do the heavy lifting. So that meant Fred could reserve a room for us on campus, but we had to hire the band, get the caterer, do the decorating, get the flowers, yada, yada, yada. It was a lot of work for people who were doing it on their own time, but fortunately we had a lot of uh, stay-at-home mothers then. I don't think we could do it now. Um, they had time during the day when the kids were in school to make the phone calls and make the contacts, and that's what made the whole thing work. But as I said, Fred was there for advice, but you had to ask for the advice. He never came forward with anything unless you said, gee, Fred, I'm having a problem with this. What do I do now? And he would say, well, in the past we have, but you might want to think about, and then again, there's also. So you had like three choices to go to. Um, I knew Tufts was not a rich school, still isn't by any standard, but I didn't know how bad off we were actually until I became chair of the council, which at the time was the power position because the president was doing the social stuff and the chair was doing the business stuff. And then we got sick of that nonsense a few years ago and combined the two jobs. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, as chair of the council, I got to go to all the uh, executive committee meetings of the board of trustees. And there's another tale to be told at some time. Um, president, our president then was Jean Mayer. Now we all know Jean Mayer had a vision and Tufts had no money. Um, putting those two things together meant we got the veterinary school and the uh, Friedman School of Nutrition with no cost to us because he knew where all the bodies were buried out there in the world. And he went out there and found the money to do it. However, the trustees were not all that trusting. They would sit at the, at the luncheon table at the medical school. Our, our chairman of the board was a, a doctor and a teacher at the medical school. And they would, they would go white. I you'd think they were bleeding to death internally. Because um, he would say, but we can do this. And we would say, okay, we can try that. We'll give it a chance. Um, we were barely ahead of bankruptcy at that point. Um, one bad semester might have put us under. But, you know, John knew what he wanted, and he did it. So thank you, John, for your vision, and thanks to Fred for the support, the advice, and a shoulder to cry on when I really needed it. Now to my current project, the Tough Senior Connection. Karen McCalley from the Office of Alumni Relations. Karen, are you still back there? Stand up, please. This is one amazing woman. She has more institutional knowledge and memory than anybody I've ever known in my life. If you talk to her once on the telephone, next time you call, she calls you by name. If she meets you once, the next time she meets you, she knows all about your family history, your children, what schools they're going to, even what your pet's name is. And by the way, Olivia says hello, that's my cat. Um, we, have, we were noticing that from time to time that we would see older alumni who would come back for alumni weekend for their reunions and for the over 55 luncheon, but we would not see them any other time during the year. So we thought, well, isn't this bizarre? You know, where are these people? So we started asking them, why aren't you coming back to Tufts functions? And we got basically three answers. First, they didn't want to drive at night. Oh yeah, I don't either, you know. Um, second, they were generally the oldest people in the room by at least 20 years, and that was awkward, you know. <laughs> so they weren't coming back. And third, since programs tend to repeat, there was a, a case of been there, heard that, don't want to do it again. So we thought, since we have all these shared interest groups, why not a shared interest group for us old timers? We could schedule a program to, during the day, we could take bus trips rather than drive our cars, and we could have a darn good time and perhaps bring back to the campus some people who've not been around much our first program was in December of 2008. We had a brunch and a 
concert at the music department um, in December, a kind of a pre-holiday party. And 91 people came on a lousy rainy day. And we thought, well, whoa, is this a one-time event? Is this never going to happen again? Um, well, we now settle down to three programs a year, and people come. Uh, different people every time for some, for some events. Some like the music. Um, some like just to get on a bus and go to the Cape and see what the heritage plantation looks like. And mainly we're using it one trip a year is to a, a section of Tufts University that people are not that familiar with. We've been to the veteran, veterinary school, which was absolutely wonderful. Those people are fantastic. We've been, we went down to the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute because the senior scientist there is a Tufts alum, and they were so good to us. And our most recent trip was into the Friedman School of Nutrition. I have never been, I never felt so welcome in anything in my life. Those people say that they think they are the best kept secret that Tufts has. And I think that's a major mistake. So we asked them on the spot, would you be willing to come back to Alumni Weekend next year and give us a program? And they said, sure. So ex expect to hear from the Friedman people in a, in a year from now. Um, you're going to love them. Now, our, our, our target demographic group are people age 55 and over. However, we, um, we list our program on, on the computer, on the, the email thingy that goes out every week. And if you young people see anything there that you want to come to, we would never turn down a family member, if you don't mind riding on a bus with 55-year-old people. Um, I can promise you we'll have cookies and a lot of fun and a good time. So if you see something that, that looks appealing to you, give us a call and come on over. Um, I want to thank the steering committee, and most especially to Karen McCallie for this, because Karen does all the heavy lifting. This is, without a doubt, the easiest job I've ever had. All I have to do is sit there and smile and conduct the meeting, and you know the best thing about being president? I don't have to take the minutes. <laughs> In closing, I need to thank that fabulous class of 1860 that founded our Alumni Association. They and their successors relentlessly petitioned the trustees for a share of governance of the college. On March 29, 1907, the charter was finally amended to provide formal alumni representation on the board of trustees, 10 alumni to be nominated by alumni and elected by alumni. That's a big deal. That doesn't happen most places. It's a privilege that we have to cherish and protect and guard with our lives. So if you didn't vote in our recent election, Shame on you. And promise me you will vote next year. Um, also, if you know somebody who ought to be an alumni trustee, we'd like to know that too. Um, I have three things more I want to say. Next week, we're having Tuftonia's Day here on the campus on uh, Friday, April 27th from 6 to 9. Tuftonia's Day was a made-up holiday that Ron Brin thought about. I mean, Ron always loved to party. Um, and this used to be run by the alumni office. It's now run by the students, and it's a whole different ball of wax, but it's fun. So from 6 to 9, we'll be on Fletcher Field. There'll be uh, all kinds of those bouncy rides and a wall to climb, and free hamburgers, which are really very good. And it ends at 9 o'clock, or at quarter to 9, with a wonderful fireworks display. So if you're in the area, and you have, you're in the mood, come on over, because I could use the company at the alumni table. Alumni weekend is May 17th to 20th. Um, there's still time to sign up for everything. If you want to go to Pops, I'd say call Karen tomorrow because those seats will be being parceled out very soon. And here's a scary one. Homecoming is very early this year. So mark September 29th on your calendar and join us under the big tent for, again, more free food because we know students like free food and so do we. And um, all kinds of fun, all kinds of teams are playing games. The football team, you know, but the, <laughs> the soccer teams are usually very good. So if you want to see a team that can win, go watch the soccer match. Um, we also have a cookie decorating booth that the students like. I think these kids have never seen a kitchen in their lives because putting frosting on a, on a cookie that's shaped like Jumbo the Elephant is such a big deal to them that I think, well, yeah, it's simple enough to do. I'll just bring more frosting next year. So I fully expect to see you all at Tuftonia's Day, at Alumni Weekend, and at Homecoming. I thank the association for this award, I think. <laughs> and I'm not done yet, folks. <laughs>